Hi, my name is Damian Chung. I'm the Business Information Security Officer and the Head of Global Security Operations at Netscope. So my company, uh, we are a cloud security as a service and network as a service company based in the SASE space. So that is Secure Access Service Edge and also Security Services Edge, SSE is the acronym for that category. And essentially, if you think about it, for all of your users who are working remote and going distributed, because we have these hybrid workforce models now, and all the data itself is also going to cloud. And so what we do as an organization is be able to give organizations that ability to uh, see the data, no matter where those users are coming from, and also uh, no matter where it's going to, because it's going into the cloud and no longer into your data centers. And so we you know, optimize the network traffic and then also uh, give visibility to what data and what actions those users are, are playing. So take the security stack and move that to the cloud. Uh, some of the challenges, I think, really that hybrid workforce model has become an issue because typically when you think about security, we look at legacy appliances, legacy firewalls, uh, legacy VPN. And the reason why that's a problem is because we have bought a lot of appliances that uh, we put inside of our data center to protect the office. And so what has happened is we have pieced together these security protocols and security stacks inside of our data center with different different hardware. And if you want to optimize that a little bit better for modern day, uh, a lot of cloud traffic, we have to move those services into the cloud. And so I think organizations today uh, should be worried about where their data is going because we have all sorts of shadow IT, a lot of users who may want to uh, stand up their own cloud service, right? Use their own SaaS applications. And then you have data leakage happening in those cases. I think trends uh, in terms of cloud security, yeah. yeah. Um, I think really being able to optimize those security policies so that we have uh, really a single platform that can really drive adaptive policy. And so one of the things I like to talk about are continuous adaptive trust. So taking user behavior analytics and uh, making a decision based off of who that user is, what device they're coming from, what data they're, they're trying to manipulate, what are they trying to do with the data? Are they trying to download it, upload it, edit it within the cloud? Um, and then what SaaS applications are they going to with it? Is it a sanctioned cloud application that your organization is using today? Or is it something that you're just not, uh, you're not allowing your users to use? So that, that type of uh, adaptive control where we can put coaching policies around that is very important. Because in security, I think one of the things that we make the mistake of doing is blocking users from doing their job. And so one of the things I like to talk about really and, and promote is having security elevate the business, you know, support the business and not hamper the business in a sense of stopping the user from doing what they want to do. I think the Indian market, you know, I've been working with Indian employees and resources for the past 20 years, over 20 years. And I think what we're seeing is that uh, it's no longer just an, an economy of do what we tell our employees to do in India anymore. Uh, we want innovation to come out of, out of India. And, and so, you know, when I'm building my internship programs and having new resources come in, I always tell them to, to challenge me in, in my thought process. And so when we look at a market like India, I think innovation is, is very key. There's a lot of new startups happening here. There's a lot of new ideas coming out of India. And I think that's because of the, you know, the, the, the new structure of the education system over the past 20 years, where it's, it's taken on a new, a new life of its own, where we can promote innovation for different thoughts of how we tackle technology or, or how we talk, tackle security even. Um, it's no longer just coming out of the West. I think out of India and some of the other Asia Pacific countries, we're seeing a lot of more, a lot more innovation. Innovation comes from uh, really thinking outside the box, and that is exactly what we want our employees to do. And, and you know, even students coming up in this space, the next generation, that innovation has to come from just wild ideas. If you think of the the status quo where we're telling uh, you know, our employees to just do as I say, there's no real innovation in that. 
And so one of the an an analogies, an analogies that I like to use is that um, if I ask somebody to make me a pot of tea, do I need to tell them step by step how to make the pot of tea? Or do I expect them to just go and make the tea? Or potentially just automate the whole process to know that I'm going to ask for tea at this time every day. Uh, right? So that whole uh, process it applies to technology as well, where I think if we can think about be proactive, think about what we need next. Uh, and you know, when we generate things like AI or create AI or machine learning, I think that's where we're headed as an industry, right? To, to be able to leverage some of these new technologies. I would say be curious and challenge yourself because if you're not putting yourself in an uncomfortable situation, then you are not challenging yourself enough to innovate. And, and so question, your peers, question your classmates, question your, your leaders. They should be open to new ideas. And I think if we're going to be able to, uh, to grow, especially within countries like India and, and the mindset, you have to think outside the box. That's great.